Hello, it's Steve here again from the Studio One Soapbox. In today's video, I want to take a look at a much overlooked little plugin that comes free with Studio One, and that is the Mix Tool. So, without further ado, let's introduce you to it. We'll put it on this uh, stereo submix, and this is basically what we have it's a trim tool at heart. Uh, much like the trim tool that you had with Pro Tools, but it comes with some extra little features. Um, so we have our gain where we can higher and lower the volume. We have block DC offset where we can turn that on or off. Now, when it comes to block DC offset, that's something a little bit technical. Uh, too technical for me, but if we come down and we look at this little article here. Basically what DC offset is, is a signal that has went above zero, uh, mostly due to a fault in some sort of electrical thing within the chain. Uh, could it be a sound card or something else that is in the chain? And it makes the auto jump up above uh, the zero level where it's supposed to be. That's as simple as I can make it. Um, if you want to read on, there's lots of other stuff here, as you can see. And if you want to get into that, have a good read at it. Um, but basically, um, for the likes of us, all we do is, if we're playing back audio, let's play back some here. And we can click our DC offset. I don't wanna wait for and there's no change in level there. So... Obviously, clicking that on and off is the quickest way to check things. Simple as that. You don't really need to get into the technical side of it. Now, below that, we have Inferred Left and Inferred Right, which is basically just our phase uh, reverse. So, if we play this again. It's just the left side. Which gives you weirdness. Right side. Same again. Reverse both. Now mostly you wouldn't really use that in this situation on a bus uh, with the whole submix going through it. Um, probably more useful on the like of overheads or stereo room mics where one might be out of phase with the other and by clicking one, say the left or clicking the right, you can check and see if there is any phase issues going on. Uh, below that we have a swap channel. That's so I'm warming up with you in my arms. And it basically swaps your left and your right around. And the guitar's in the left. And that's it in the right. And sometimes this is handy because uh, switching uh, channels can add a whole new dimension to your song. Sometimes it may think it even sounds better that way. So it's a handy little feature to have. And finally, we have MS Transform, which is Mid-Side Transform. And basically, this little button will decode things that have been recorded in a Mid-Side. Um, and also, with clicking it on, it can help create Mid-Side as well. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, EQs, like the Shep 73, where you can do Mid-Side processing. Um, I think BX have one, and lots of other ones. Uh, do mid side, um, but it does split your signal. If we listen a bit, to run and click it on. You can hear the mids are in the left side, and anything that would be on the sides is on the right. As you can see here from the meter, there's not really any mid side processing going on. So again, another handy feature to have, um, maybe looking a bit more in depth as to how to utilize that function. So what else can we use this little mix tool for? Well, obviously it is a trim tool, first and foremost. So say for instance, um, on the focals here, and say we had sent our mix off, and they said, listen, we're very happy with the mix, but could you possibly raise the focal 2 dB? Now, the thing about it is, if you've got automation going on on this fader, which you more likely will be in the, the main vocal, and you have this uh, channel being processed through some EQs 
um, some reverbs on effects channels and you have sends going off it and you have compressors set up all working off it then just moving the fader can completely throw off everything you've got especially when you've automation so the easiest thing to do is throw in a mix to the want the focal 2 dB lower minus 2 boom job done and that's it you send that off to them they come back again they say mm, no we think it could come up a little bit you're like okay no problem minus one we've brought it up a bit And obviously as a trim tool it works very well too um, let me see if I can just demonstrate something else here um, the SSL EQ and as you can see here we have an output knob which controls the gain of the output but we have nothing to control the amount of volume that's coming into this plugin now this isn't really a problem on most plugins now because they come complete with an input and an output gain knob. But if you do come across an older plugin such as this uh, EQ, and we know that a lot of plugins prefer to be hit around the minus 18 uh, dB. Um, this is for them to work most efficiently. So they do need the right level of signal coming into them. And of course, we want that same amount coming back out because just adding volume can fool our ears into thinking that we have done something miraculous to our mix. So in this case, let's say we just do a couple of EQ moves. To run around outside. So it can work as a trim tool to help us get the right level going into plugins that don't have an input and the same it can be used to control the output should there be no output uh, gain control on a certain plugin. Let's take that off, get rid of that. So that's an, the main use of it is a trim tool. Now what else it's fantastic for is when it comes to checking your drum phase. Let me clean this up a little bit and we'll get rid of that so let's go to our drums now when it comes to drums the number one thing to check all the time is our phase so firstly I would start off with my snare drum and see how it's going along with our overheads which is these two tracks here so let's play some of that So if we add a mix to, to our snare top and we click invert phase you can definitely hear that the snare drum thickens up with the phase inverted. Listen carefully. So there we go, we can have it there. Uh, next up, let's check our bass drum against, or our kick bass drum if you come from the UK, kick if you're in America. So throw in our mix tool, <clears throat> and let's see how our kick goes with our overheads. Since these are the four main mics of the drum kit, it's good to always check the phase relationship between these four mics. So let's try our kick drum now, uh, in phase, hopefully, with our overheads. Let's see how we get on. The kick 
spectrum does sound a little uh, light, so let's invert the phase. Ooh, did you hear that just tighten up and get more depth and more weight to it? Let's take it off. The bass is completely gone. Let's add it back in. There you go. So it can be great for quickly uh, checking the phase on your drums. Um, again, you can use the gain control for any trim that you may have going on. And obviously it helps with again staging and stuff like that. So just to show you, that's our mix tube. Uh, this is the stereo version. Uh, the invert phase is simply invert left and right on the stereo version. And you can see we have a few more options. Obviously, you can't swap channels when it is already in mono. So, I hope you found that useful. I hope that offered a couple of ideas. As you can see, Mix Tool is great. Firstly and foremost, as a trim tool uh, to control your input. Say, maybe go on to a plugin that doesn't have an input or an output. Um, it can also help if you've got a load of uh, plugins going on. You can quickly drop this on the bottom of them and lower the gain if there's too much going on there or hire it, whatever it may be. Um, we also use it excellent for drums um, to check our phase as we phase corrected here, our snare and our kick drum with our overheads. And when the stereo version, we can do block DC offset Again, quite technical, usually um, to do with a faulty audio card. We can do our phase with our inferred left, inferred right. We can swap our channels around, swatch uh, left and right. And we can do MS transform, where we can decode MS stereo signals or use it to actually encode further down the line. So make good use of this little tool. Um, Personally, I think it would do well for personas to just have this incorporated across every channel, every bus and every effects channel because it's always there and you can just flick your phase or you can use it for gain staging purposes and especially on tracks that have automation, it's a quick way to make a gain adjustment uh, without ruining your automation or your signal going to other plugins and such like. So thanks for joining me today. Hope you found this useful. Happy mixing and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.